When I, when I came out here uh, on the very first morning, I, I said, look, this is, uh, this is your forum. It's our forum. This is your movement. We've tried to build a space where you can come and you can commit to action, find each other, spur each other on, drive forward towards our shared goals. So I want to thank you for coming. I want to thank you for making this the vibrant space that it has been for the last three days. I, I've been absolutely bowled over by the ingenuity, by the passion, by the brilliance of the insights, the sharp focus, the discipline, everything that you've brought together here, all behind the shared commitment of what it would take to realize these goals to reach SDG 7. And, you know, uh, Peter, I, it's almost palpable at times that we believe that this can be done. Every lesson here has been built on the evidence, uh, the data. Data is not everything, but knowing where we came from, knowing where we are, and therefore where we will go, is a very big important part of this. I'm pleased that we've been able to take a moment and celebrate our success and be inspired by each other. And I'm really pleased that we have collectively found the courage to look in on where we're not having enough impact, where we're not making enough progress, and I've seen really hard work going on in partner working sessions about, well, what are we going to do to go to the next level? That collective courage to interrogate ourselves so that we can be fitter to go further, faster, I think is the true mark of a real movement. I think what we've also seen is if we add up everything that's going on in this room, it really is extraordinary, but we know that we're not on track. And at this rate, we are going to break the promise to each other, the promise that was enshrined in that remarkable moment in the General Assembly Hall when everybody agreed to the SDGs in September 2015. But most of all, I'm full of hope. I'm full of hope because you brought stories here. You told stories, you shared stories. The story of action, the story of what it meant, the story of personal transformation, the remarkable stories from the network from Energia and the Solar Sisters and others that were going on this morning down that end of the hall. But off those stories is a commitment to even greater action. For example, in just three short days, the government of Chile working with District Energy and Cities Initiative has launched a strategy to tackle air pollution and improve air quality for their citizens, EP100, the alliance of companies that are committing to doubling their energy efficiency, announced that Woolworths from South Africa is joining. They will double their energy productivity by 2020. The microgrid investment accelerator launched the first of its kind facility, seeking to mobilize 50 million via public-private partnerships, in just between 2018 and 2020 for energy in India, Indonesia, and East Africa, with two blue ribbon tech investors looking for complementary investment from some of you in this room. I'm not looking at anybody in particular, and uh, for others who are not here. We saw with a huge push from HEVOS from the Netherlands, high level representation from governments and private sector and civil society sitting down and working through what it would take for an intensified partnership between sectors to really work on the decentralized solution for access. REN21, an absolutely incredible partner in the data and the evidence and the mobilization around renewable energy, published the Renewables Global Futures Report, analyzing the views of more than 100 energy experts on the feasibility of achieving 100% renewable energy in the future. Five more cities joined the Building Efficiency Accelerator. And then just this afternoon, we launched with an invitation to join those who are already in leadership, a people-centered accelerator, a partnership to advance gender equality, social inclusion, and women's empowerment in pursuit of SDG 7. Smart Villages, a fantastic organization. If you didn't meet them, meet them before you leave. Underscored the enormous knowledge base at the local level how essential informed consent is in informing and helping deliver energy access for all. This morning, Sustainable Energy for All humbled working with faith communities from around the world with the Wallace Global Fund and Green Faith offered a call to action called SHINE, an opportunity to mobilize civil society, faith and philanthropy to bring new sources of capital, resources, technical assistance and ideas in pursuit of closing the energy access gap in ending energy poverty. All of that 
and more, check on the website, check on our Twitter feed in just three days. But let's be honest, we look each other in the eye, we know we're not on track, there's still much to be done, we're not going far enough, we're not going fast enough, but I can see that each of you is rising to the challenge and you're lifting each other up. So if you are an organization that's doing incredible work to improve energy efficiency, including energy efficiency on the demand side, the appliances and the things that we need to have a productive economy. Can you come forward? Can you come and stand on the stage, around the stage? If you have got any part of this story, can you come up here? Minister of Health, you should be here. Okay, look around, look up. 2030 is tough. We've got photographers here. And then look at each other. Take the hand of the person next to you. Have a moment. This is us. This is the we in we the peoples. This is the we in we the peoples determined. This is what it's going to take. This is sustainable energy for all. This is dignity for all. This is getting it done. This is going faster, further, together. Thank you.